to the Conversations That Matter podcast from Unicorn, the podcast that dives into real conversations that are happening in contact centers around the world. Here you'll experience exciting interviews with well-known thought leaders, hear compelling stories from industry experts, gain fresh insights on contact center best practices and more. So grab a beverage and tune in as we get real with Conversations That Matter. Hey everyone, welcome to CX Day. I'm so excited that you're here. We are live now uh, and we just wanted to welcome you to a, a great day where we're recognizing customer experience professionals around the world. And with me today, we have uh, my coworker, uh, Sabrina Thelwell. She is the Senior Customer Success Manager. Welcome, Sir, Sabrina. Welcome, Randy. I'm so excited to be here. It's an awesome day today. It is. Uh, you know, <laughs> this is something where we uh, just, you know, we live and breathe CX all day long. Yes. Um, and, and it's something that we kind of take for granted, but it's it's good to kind of take a pause for a moment and kind of recognize where uh, people have come from. Uh, and so for today, um, we want to know where are you guys connecting in from? You know, we, we're living in a, in a virtual world, in a hybrid world today. And so if you can comment down below, wherever that below is. Uh, we're across uh, the interwebs here, uh, whether you're on LinkedIn or, or whether you're on Twitter, or Facebook, or YouTube, let us know and uh, we'd love to give you guys a shout out. And so uh, as we kind of move along, um, you know, for those that don't know who you are, uh, Sabrina, uh, tell us uh, a little bit about yourself and what you do at Unifor. Sure. So I am relatively new to Unifor. I've been here about three months now, uh, but I'm not new to customer success. I have spent the last 17 years being passionate about delivering the best possible service to our customers and really ensuring that the customers are seeing consistent value. Um, for me, the, the measure of that is, do our customers keep coming back? Yeah. Right. Do they keep renewing? Do they keep buying more things? Do they recommend us to other partners, other vendors? And so the role that we play in really driving that lens with the customer and, and really being that extension of their team is, is so super critical. And the role that we play is even more so at the end of the day, we become the face of the company to the customer. We have that constant sure. interaction. So the relationships that we can build and nurture and our ability to help our customers not only meet their short-term goals, but also their long-term goals collectively really sets us apart. So I've just been so proud not only to be in customer success, both as an individual contributor, but also in a leadership role in the past. So it really gives me um, a really varied lens to be able to work yeah. with all of our customers, no matter where they are in their journey. So that is the, the key thing that you just said in terms of why you are here today. I mean, your vast experience, kind of what you do at Unifor as well as what you've done in the past. So lots of lessons learned uh, that, uh, in tip, you know, less, excuse me, lesson nuggets, if you will, uh, that uh, you'll be uh, bestowing upon us. Um, and, you know, I'll share some of mine too over the years. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll make this as fun and engaging as possible. Um, so thanks for people from Texas. We have someone all the way from Tunisia, yes. uh, which is awesome. <laughs> um, and we, we love you guys. And so thanks uh, for tuning in uh, today. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you know, the, the theme that the CXPA uh, put out uh, is uh, around CX is a team sport. And so we just want to uh, do a little deep dive into that and, you know, think about, you know, what does that really, what does that really mean um, to you, Sabrina? I, I know for me, uh, it's all about collaboration. Uh but I'd uh, love to hear uh, from your perspective what your thoughts are on, on that uh, theme of the year. You know, I think we've all heard the saying that it takes a village. Um, yeah. It takes a village for a lot of things. And especially when we're talking about, um, you know, the customer experience, customer service, customer satisfaction, um, that couldn't be any more true. Um, if you think about our customers and the way that we interact with them, they really hold the power in their relationships with businesses. Right. So it's not enough as a business to just deliver products to your customers. Um, they're expecting that we're delivering outcomes as well as successes. And so in order to do that, it really takes a cohesive team. You, know, you can have great groups of uh, people within your organization who are individually doing great things to move the line across. 
But if we don't have a customer centric environment, um, and if we're only handing off responsible of customer success to one person, we're really doing our customers a disservice. So at the end of the day, if our goal is truly to be customer first, then we have to do a better job of actually spreading that customer first methodology mm -hmm. and thinking just outside the walls of the customer success teams, but to cross all of the teams in the company. So that yeah. at the end of the day, it is one village working together for that common goal irrespective of what your specific role in the organization is. Uh, that's very true. So no solid approach. Um, that was perhaps 20 years ago. Yes. Um, maybe <laughs> even not that far back. I mean, yeah. what are your thoughts on, on I mean, it has the CX role. Um, it, there is a CXO role now, of course, in companies. But 20 years ago, there really didn't exist. wasn't, right? No, it, it didn't exist. You know. What I saw in the past was this role was very reactive, right? Yeah. Customer has an issue, you jump in and respond, you put up the fire and you wait for the next fire. But there wasn't this thought on how to cultivate long-term success, how to cultivate value with your customers, how to cultivate that attitude of, I know what you're doing for me every day, Sabrina, because you're proactively showing up. So we've yeah. gone from just firefighting and putting out the fires to being thoughtful about how am I proactive in, in showing value, right? And yeah. that's a consistent thing that you deliver every day. So one of the things that I look at is what are the things that I can do that show the customer that I'm being thoughtful about your business goals? I'm being thoughtful about your drivers. I'm being thoughtful about your initiatives. I'm being thoughtful to let you know that what we bring to the table every single day is gonna help you accomplish that. And if they don't, we're going to talk about how to do that. So when we can take off that reactive firefighting hat and really take a step back and think about that longer term proactive approach, that shifts the lens. It yeah. shifts the value. The customers start to see the value right away in not only the products, but the delivery of the products. And one of the best things that's at renewal time, it's not this question of, well, what have you done for me? They yeah, right. know what you've done because you've exactly. demonstrated that value again and again and again consistently over time. Yeah, I mean, if they ask that question, then it's probably too late. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably okay. not going to be a good renewal, Randy. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be fun. <laughs> so uh, on that note, uh, let's talk about leadership um, and how uh, a CXO or, or someone that is leading the customer experience initiatives at a company, you know, where does one start? I mean, say you're, and you've worked with customers before with those specific roles. Yes. Say you're, you're starting a new role. Um, maybe it's a new type of uh, initiative at the company. Where do you, where do you go? Where do you start kind of hunting for, uh, for answers and for <laughs> help? So for me, I take a very simple approach. I think the, the, the first key to success is really establishing your credibility with the client, right? Yeah say exactly what you're going to do, do exactly what you're going to say, and follow up and close that loop. Um, if you really focus on building those strong collaborative opening partnerships from day one, for me, that's going to be the key, not only to short-term success, but long-term success. Yeah. Um, I like to sit back and take a step. I want to understand their culture. Um, what are their values? Um, how do they like to communicate? How do I need to adjust my style, my approach, my method, to really embrace, embrace their cultures and their values. Yeah, so um, the internal buy-in is super key, right? And, and you've got it. The only way you can do that is by understanding the culture, how everyone kind of interacts with each other. You know, what's uh, uh, more important in, in one team versus another? Might not be right. And so you, yeah. you really need to sit back and take the time. Um, a one-size-fits approach does not work here. Right. And even with within a company, you have different groups of people who want to communicate different ways. Um, your job is to figure that out. How do you get the message across? And again, how do you build that trust, that loyalty, that credibility in any customer relationship? There are going to be challenges. Yeah, there are going to be issues. Right. But your ability to navigate those based on your credibility, based on the respect that you have found for each other is really what's going to set you apart. And it was really what's going to make the navigation of those issues a little bit easier at the end of the day. Awesome. So uh, if you have just tuned in, we are talking with Sabrina Thelwell from Unifor. She is a senior customer success manager. And today is CX day. Okay. So make sure to give love and gratitude to all those that are practicing customer experience uh, in, in your world, whether in your company or maybe your, your customers. 
Um, so Sabrina, we're going to talk about, uh, still talk about leadership and we're going to focus uh, around kind of the team uh, dynamic and, and more so the, the structure of the team. Can you tell us, uh, you know, how does one go about creating that structure so that it isn't a siloed approach, that uh, there is a, a you know, cohesive uh, kind of mission in mind? Yeah. I think the first thing that you have to do, Randy, is you have to really build um, a team mindset. Every member of the team, every different organization that makes up the part of the team um, really needs to understand at the end of the day how critical their role is. And a lot of times when we're working in silo teams and we're just seeing just that small portion of what it is that we do, we don't understand the broader, more general impact to the customer. So one of the things that I like to do when I'm working with teams is I want to sit back. I want to collectively help everyone understand how what they do makes a difference, how what they do is received by the customer and how yeah. important what they do is. And when everyone understands that their role is just a smaller part of the bigger picture, but it's such a critical part, it really changes that, right? It allows when you're sure. working with teams for us to be able to put the customer at the center of all the conversations, right? It allows us to actually now share data across the teams and give the teams for context. When I ask someone to do something, it's not just a matter of, hey, this is what needs to get done. Um, if you can stop and pause and help them understand why the impact, what will happen if it goes well or not, then it really gives them that buy in to say, I make a difference. Yeah. And because I make a difference, I want my work to stand apart. I want my solution to stand apart. I want my delivery to stand apart. So for, for sure. me, that's yeah. really going to be a big part of it. And then the other thing is really having and encouraging open discussions, yeah. right? As teams, we want to get together. We want to talk about when things don't go right and there's opportunities for improvement. But guess what? We also want to celebrate those wins, those successes, because again, it takes that village. It takes everybody coming together. Sure not just doing their part, but understand how their part fills the whole. And so for me, having that constant collaboration, that feedback and the ability to be honest and open and candid, I think is, is what sets that team attitude apart. And that's what I strive for as I work with a lot of different cross-functional teams every day. Yeah. Uh, well, one thing that I love what you talked about is the data. And, and sometimes, you know, people are kind of just in their, uh, you know, type in way, they're developers or engineers, and, and they don't really realize the effect that they're having on the next push, the next release that they're you doing. So <laughs> that seeing that data in terms of like say the customer feedback or, or the usage of the product, I think is, is super key and definitely. I would uh, absolutely motivates. agree. You know, we, we, like you said, we're so heads down on just our one little part. Yeah. And sometimes we miss just how much that part fills in the hole. Yeah. Right. So helping people to see that, I think, um, helps us work together so much better, you know, and then collaboration. I love real time collaboration. Right. Yeah. Especially we're talking about teams using Microsoft Teams is one of my favorite gives us the ability to quickly bounce things, ping things. Here's an idea. Yeah. What did you think? And it, and it just encourages participation. And when you feel that you are welcome to participate and your ideas are valued, it really changes how you participate with the team. Yep, it does. Um, so, uh, a, a former, uh, coworker of mine, uh, a friend of the CX industry, his name is Jeremy Watkins. He's over uh, at number barn. He's the director of CX and customer support, and he does a daily CX question of the day. So if you ever want to look for it, for that, look up the hashtag CX Q O T D, um, on LinkedIn or Twitter, every, literally every day, there's a question that comes from him around CX. Um, and one of the things that I thought was interesting that he did uh, in the past week was why should the customer care or customer support team care about CX? And wanted to get your take uh, on that. You know, the first thing that stands out to me, Randy, is brand perception and brand recognition. As we're working closely with our customers and as we start to onboard them and we work with them with product adoption. Yeah. The CS team's job is really to ensure that the customers have the best experience possible, which at the end of the day is going to maximize your brand perception. My goal is to turn every single customer into an advocate, right? And right. if we are focused on improving our brand perception by improving the experience, our customers at the end of the day become walking advertisements for us. They're excited to talk to other companies about what we do. They're excited to say, hey, we're doing this cool thing with Unifor. 
Yes. Let me tell you about it. This is like super awesome in the way that they deliver. So for me, that's probably one of the biggest ones is that customer satisfaction, what we do, how we interact with the customer drives that brand perception, drives that brand adoption because we become that face. And what a unique opportunity we have to really take how we interact, how we talk, how we deliver and wow our customers. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so if you're listening to us, uh, on the audio end or on, uh, excuse me, on the on-demand end or live, uh, we want to take your questions and comments. So just comment down below. And we'd love to answer your questions around CX uh, and how we can help your organization. Um, and if you listen to us on demand, just email us at podcast at uh, unifor.com and we'll get back to you. All right. So uh, another thing uh, around CX, uh, which I think, at the executive level, a lot of people talk about is how do we measure success? Um, what are your, some of your kind of data points, metrics uh, that you take a look at for when you're measuring CX? So there are so many, so I'm only going to touch on a few. Um, one of the ones that I like is what's considered the, the CLV. That's the customer lifetime value. And it's basically the fundamental um, metric that we look at that tells us, looking at the revenue that we're getting from the customer, how much do we expect that to generate over the lifetime, right? Yep. When we use that customer lifetime value and we look at that and it's increasing and it's growing, that tells us that we are creating customers who renew. We're creating customers who are taking advantage of new products, right? And that's driving that. But if we're looking at that value and it's going down, they're spending less and less money over time, it may mean that we need to reevaluate our offers. Right. We may need to look at flaws in our delivery, right? We may need to step back and focus on what are we doing? What are the drivers for that? So really understanding kind of our customer spend and what they do with us is really important. Um, another one that I love is first contact resolution, right? As a customer, when I have an issue, if I call in, if I email in, if I chat in, I want it to get resolved that first time. And every time that we can improve that first call resolution, we can wow the customer, we can get an issue, resolve it, and get them back to their production day, it really sets us apart. It really lets us know that if we're actually doing that, we're not only responding to our customers, but we're promptly addressing their needs. So our ability to actually resolve issues when they pop on up uh, and do it effectively the first time is also going to be key for me. Um, and then the other one is just our renewal rate. Happy yeah, customers renew. Right. Right. It's it's that simple. Happy customers renew customers who see value in your products and your service delivery renew. Yeah. You know, we talked about it. Renewal should be a very easy discussion if you spend be, yeah. the necessary time over the customer lifestyle, building and nurturing that relationship yeah. and then showing the value that you add every single interaction, not yeah. just when there's an issue, but when there's nothing else going on. Yeah, you got to put the effort in for sure. <laughs> um, so we, we're getting some uh, some more comments in. Uh, we have a question right now. You know, we'll take it right now. Why not? Uh, how would you encourage sales to focus on CX? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I love that. So for me, hand in hand, CX needs to be an extension of the sales team, right? At the end of the day, that's their client. And that means that it's our client. So we have to work collectively together. So one of the things I like to do is I like to sit down with our sales leaders, right? And we actually meet regularly. We actually help them understand, here's the customer experience. Here are the challenges that they're having right now. Here are the things that they're focused on. Here is the feedback. So that they actually are armed with all of that is not only they continue to sell, within that customer base, but as they also leverage some of those experiences from that customer to bring to other customers. Um, we have to be tied hand in hand. Yeah, it's sure. not just enough for a salesperson to sell the product, deliver the service and walk away, right? That doesn't keep customers coming back. So it's important that the sales team becomes a part of that customer experience and that I can say, here are the wins we celebrated this week with our customer. Yeah. Or, you know, here are the challenges that we're having and here are the plans that we're going to do. But at the end of the day, the sales team needs to know exactly the temperature, the lens, the challenges, kind of the roadmap for our customer, milestones that we're tracking. So that, again, it's that village. We're all working together, right? We need to be able to leverage each other effectively every single day at the beginning of the sales cycle and throughout the entire customer journey. That's awesome. No, great points. Uh, so hopefully that answered your question. Thanks uh, for that comment there. Yes, thank you, Sharice. 
Uh, so uh, let's get uh, to our next uh, topic, which is around careers in CX. Um, this is probably a new curriculum uh, that are, are being taught at, at universities and, and technical trade schools. Um, kind of curious your thought on what um, would be helpful, um, you think, to, to put into uh, the curriculum th uh, these days? You know, I think it's super exciting that this even exists now. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't even a thing, a thing for me. I, I never said, hey, I'm going to be in customer success. Um, so the fact that there are programs specifically focused on this, I think, are absolutely so exciting. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I look at and one of the things um, that I'm looking for in this field is I think that there are intrinsic traits that people need to have to really be successful in this field. So as we're looking at, you know, what advice, the things I would say is really focus on effective communication, um, whether that's verbal, whether that's a PowerPoint, um, really focus on how to communicate based on the audience that you're communicating to, right? How you will communicate to a customer's engineering team may not be the same way that you communicate to their sure. executive team. And you have to have that, that discernment to know how to cater your message so that it's received very well. Um, the other thing, honestly, that's most important is focus on building and maintaining relationships. That is what customer success is all about, right? Yeah. Building and maintaining and not only just starting that, but nurturing it over time. I make it a point to invest in my customers' lives. I ask about their family. I want to know about their hobbies. I want them to know that when they talk to me, that I care. They're not just a number. They're not just a customer. This is a partnership. And the things that they do matters. Um, the other one that I have learned, and this has been an important one for me, is understand how to deliver a no. Right? <laughs> yeah. When it's we're hard. working with customers, it is hard. But when we're working with customers, internal or external, there's always going to come a time when you have to deliver a challenging message. You're always going to have to deliver a no. And being thoughtful about how you deliver it versus, no, I can't do that. But, yes. <laughs> you know, a customer, I looked at that. I did the analysis. And here the, here's why I can't do that. But let me give you some thoughts on how we can accommodate that or what else we can accomplish together. Yeah. Learning how to deliver a no sets your message apart. Right, because you've still you've still in an essence said mm -mm, I can't really do that. <laughs> yeah, right. right. But the way that you've talked about it still says, but I'm going to work with you on it. Let's figure out something else. Let's work together. So that one for me has been has been really huge. And then I think the last one is having a strong sense of emotional intelligence. Right. What do you mean and by that? When you're in customer success. A lot of times you're going to have to diffuse situations. You're going to be in very volatile situations. And it's just a matter, of course, for the business. But if you can actually be in tuned with other people's emotions and how they might receive something, again, it helps with the delivery of that message. Gotcha. So I, I tell my, my friends all the time, you can deliver a message two ways, right? You know, I give an analogy with a steak. If I cooked a steak and this beautiful steak and it had mushrooms and gargonzola on it and it looked amazing, but I served it to you on a garbage can cover, yeah, no. you wouldn't want it. No. Nope. You wouldn't want it at all, even though it's an amazing steak. So we have to be mindful about how we're serving out information. If the intent is adoption, if the intent is alignment, if the intent is agreement, we're the ones who have to step back and really be thoughtful about that. No, that's a great point. Um, you have to know what your end goal is, what your what your mission is, uh, and I think that's uh, super key on, on just uh, overly communicating that sometimes to your yes. team. Yes, <laughs> more is more. <laughs> yeah. um, quick question. I mean, you talked about customer success, which is your role. Is there a difference between customer success and customer experience? For me, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, I don't like when we separate them apart. So whether it's the customer experience, the customer journey, customer success, customer service, right? Yeah. Um, the first word is customer, yeah. right? That's the first word unequivocally. That means that irrespective of how you want to label it, all of those functions, the customer has to come first. And we need to be able to balance the needs of our customers internally with our business needs, but always with a lens for how do we wow our customer? How do we make sure that the products that we're delivering, the services that we're delivering are in alignment with our customer's journey and, and what they're intending to do? So I think they all go together, Andy. Yeah. Okay. So uh, 
wouldn't be a a podcast, a LinkedIn Live from Unifor without talking about AI and automation. Yes. Uh, so we wanted to get into the kind of the future of CX, and, and we believe it's definitely around AI and automation. Um, but what are your thoughts around how that's going to change uh, the customer experience uh, industry and just the overall experience that customers are having, whether yeah. employees or customers? You got it. Um, for me, AI and automation is so huge. Um, as I look at doing things every day, I keep thinking that the things that are repeatable, all of the same, we can automate those. And, you know, customers nowadays, they don't want to wait for answers, Randy. They want to get answers as quickly as possible. They want to get information as quickly as possible. They want to get what they need as quickly as possible. And so if we're going to keep up with the pace of our customers and keep up with the demand of our customers, we have to bring in automation to make things easier, quicker. Um, you know, one of the things I love is really the, the accurate and personalized recommendations, right? I've just done a search for running shoes. And now I'm on Facebook and all of a sudden I've got three or four ads for shoes that fit what I was looking for. And yeah. I didn't stop to think that that was AI in the back personalizing something for me just kind of based on my search history. Yeah. So the first thing that we're going to be able to do is to really make personalized and targeted recommendations to our customers based on what matters to them. Um, the part for me, though, that I honestly love is just how it's going to bring about more efficient and friendlier service. Um, I don't know about you, Randy, but I hate calling in for support. Like, I, I do. I do. I hate being put on hold. I hate calling to support. Uh, I unless hate calling I, in. <laughs> unless I know the person that I'm calling. Like, they've helped me in the past, and I have their, yes, their unless number. I have a direct Otherwise, line, but I, yeah. I don't want to call in, right? Yeah. I want to be able to get the answers that I want on my time in the way that I want to receive information. Yeah. So the ability for us to have uh, chat bots, uh, virtual assistants, that's going to be so huge. Customers love to fish, right? If you give them a fishing pole, they will go fish all day. So that. being able to, you know, bring in chat bots and AI so that once again, we can help them get what they need when they need it. I think that's going to be so important as well. Yeah. And then just when we're talking about automation, it takes us out of the business day, right? where we're not just serving you Monday through Friday, eight to five. Now we're a round the clock organization, sure. right? And we're able to leverage that technology to really handle what I'm going to call the simple, easy things. And then it lets us use our people for the things that are complex that require that level. So just the ability to do that means that humans always don't have to be around to serve our customers. Right. But why not give them what they need again when they need it? We have to speak to our customers the way that they want to receive and consume information. That's what AI is going to do. And what we're doing here at Unifor with AI is amazing in terms of how it's revolutionizing the contact sort of industry and allowing those industries to actually do more with less agents, right? That's what yep. we're doing, right? We're all trying to yep. do more with less. <laughs> more with less. That's right. All right. Well, uh, thanks for, for sharing kind of the insight on, on, on the future of CX there. Um, you know, we, we, we are, uh, at the point where we're going to do some rapid fire, kind of get to know you a little bit better. Uh, I feel like we have gotten to know you already. Um, you have a, such a positive, wonderful attitude, and I love it. Um, Thank so we need you. To bring you. We need to bring you back on the podcast for sure. Um, <laughs> so I'd love to come back. This is awesome. Awesome. Uh, so for those that are listening in, uh, you know, if you have any comments or questions for Sabrina, uh, let us know uh, and just comment down below, um, or you can send us an email at podcast at before.com. Um, if you listen to this on, on demand and, uh, let's start with some rapid fire, real quick answers, okay. uh, quick questions. Uh, so we'll go over the first one. One thing that isn't on your LinkedIn profile. I have a catering business and I am very passionate about cooking. Um, uh, my background is Jamaican and, uh, I honor my parents' memory by uh, cooking oh, and sharing awesome. my love for Caribbean food with other people. Very good. Uh, so if there was a meal that you could cook for CX day, what would it be? Oh, it would hands down be my favorite. It would be curry chicken, rice and peas, fried plantains and cabbage with carrots. All right. I'll be right over. I'll be right <laughs> over. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> uh, one brand that you admire or recently referred due to a positive customer experience. Amazon hands down. Uh, the Amazon driver is probably at my house every day, probably a little too much. Uh, but I had an experience last week where I ordered an immersion blender and I got a heating pad. 
right? <laughs> not quite the same. <laughs> no, no. It was it was the simple quick to say, hey, I received the wrong product. I had the right product the next day. And yeah. they said, you have 45 days to send the old one back. It couldn't have been simpler. Every interaction with them is just seamless and easy. And I never have to talk to anyone, which is always a plus for me. That is a plus. I mean, we're all multitasking. We got our jobs, our family life. I mean, it's to trying to keep us healthy. Like the last thing you want to do is stay on the line for yes, a while. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so Amazon has definitely mastered that. And they wow me with, with every interaction. Awesome. I just uh, had a great experience with a sunglasses company out of all people. Um, I have a notion of uh, losing things quite a bit. <laughs> I don't know why, but ever since I was a young kid, uh, so my parents never forgave me. Uh, but seriously, uh, it's a company called Gooder, G-O-O-D-R. I'll have uh, to check it out. And their glasses are only 25 bucks. They're not like Ray-Bans or, or others that are, you know, 200 plus. And so just the way that they message on, on the web and on their uh, box experience was just like phenomenal. So I, awesome. that's, that's who I've been recommending recently. I'll check it out. And you don't feel as bad when you lose a $25 pair of glasses. Exactly. Because I know, I mean, <laughs> I know I'm going to lose it. I mean, I haven't solved that problem yet. Um, I'm mean, going to have my wife <laughs> help me, but yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, favorite book or movie incorporating a memorable uh, CX? This is probably my quintessential one. Pretty Woman, right? The scene where she goes in in her normal outfit and she has money to spend and she wants to buy this exquisite gown and they immediately look at her and say, well, you can't afford any of this. Right. And, and he, she just looks so just down and disheartened. And then when she has her transformation and she comes back and she's like, told you, <laughs> told you, right. I love that. That for me is like, never assume anything about a customer yeah. just based on the way that they look. So they missed out on this wonderful opportunity for her to spend all of their money just because she didn't look like their target customer. So that's probably my favorite scene in Pretty Woman. Awesome. Uh, we have a question that just came in uh, from Jonathan Price, one of our coworkers, uh, but it's a really good question. Uh, <laughs> when delivering perceived bad news to the customer, what approach do you use? Great question, Jonathan. Um, I think we have this all the time. I just had a, um, a situation with the customer where a deadline was gonna be missed. Um, so one of the first things I realized is that bad news doesn't get better with time, right? Yeah. And that when you have a message to deliver, you really need to deliver it as quickly as possible. Um, I think about who to deliver it to. Um, sometimes it's better to deliver it one-on-one, -on -one, especially if you have a key relationship with a customer. And that way you can talk very candidly about it before you deliver it in a forum. Uh, but typically I try to help them understand how we got here, yep. what the message is, the impact to them. But past that, how do I make sure that we don't end up here again? Right. What steps am I going to take so that as an organization, we learn from this experience so that I'm not delivering this message the next time? Um, what I've realized is customers normally don't have an issue when you have to deliver bad news or there's a challenge. But what they want to know is that you're learning from that experience and what we don't keep having the same challenges and the same issues. So I make sure that I always follow up with here are our lessons learned and going forward. Here's how we mitigate or manage this risk for this particular issue. So I hope that answered your question, Jonathan. Yeah, that's awesome. No, definitely a great question. All right, uh, the last, uh, all right, thanks for loving this chat. Uh, definitely yes. <laughs> share it out. Um, this will all be available on demand after we hit the end broadcast. Uh, so definitely uh, share it out to your teams. Uh, last rapid fire question before we close uh, for the day. Uh, CX Thought Leader, you enjoy reading uh, and getting advice from. Uh, Blake Morgan is who I picked. Uh, super cool, best-selling author, uh, keynote speaker. Um, she has something that she says that really resonates with me, and it's really so. very simple. Um, if you make people's lives easier and better, you'll always have an audience. I, I don't. That's that's me. It sums it up. It sums it up right there. So I, I really enjoy yeah. listening to her. Yeah, I know she has a great podcast, uh, and definitely uh, her uh, and her husband uh, Jacob Morgan are both definitely um, great uh, people to gain advice from. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. All right. Well, uh, that is uh, today's wonderful uh, CX Day conversation with Sabrina from Unifor. So thanks uh, for the time Thank today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. And we hope that uh, all you guys out there listening in uh, are having uh, a, 
you know, creating memorable, uh, remarkable customer experiences, uh, this is the time uh, to really go full speed ahead uh, on making sure that customers are first. Yes. Uh, if you have any other questions or comments, definitely comment below on this video or if you're listening to this on our podcast, shoot us an email at podcast at unifor.com or you can also uh, get us going uh, on, on social, tag us uh, at Unifor on Twitter or on LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, wherever you are following us. Uh, last comment uh, we got from LinkedIn user. Good stuff. Thanks. You, you said never to have to talk to someone at Amazon as a goal. Where does Unifor call uh, center automation come in? Is goal never to have a call center? No. So definitely the goal is never to have a call center. But for those questions that can be answered easily, quickly, give that information to your customers so that they're calling in for the things that actually require a level of human interaction and complexity. All right, I shouldn't have to call Amazon for a return. That's very simple. They do that all the time. But if it's something that's really complex, that's where the phone calls come in. So that what that does for call centers is it changes the profile of the agents they hire. They're hiring different types of agents to handle sure. more complex, longer, lengthier interactions. And they're driving those short-term things to AI, to online interactions. So call centers will never go away, but how call centers operate will change. Yeah, Not absolutely change. Awesome. Well, great question. Great answer. Uh, so thanks everyone for tuning in. This has been another podcast uh, from Unifor. This is the Conversations That Matter podcast. If you like what you heard today, if you want to hear more conversations about CX, definitely comment below, rate and review us on your favorite podcast directory. And uh, we wish you a amazing CX day and uh, have a good one. And we'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon, everyone. Thank you so much right. for joining us. Everyone.